and welcome to another forestry video. Now in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make a massive bouquet but in the simplest way. So this is the simple way that I do it and I find it more easier when I've only got two hands. So this is the bouquet that we are going to be making today. <laughs> pink roses, 30 yellow roses, 10 orange roses and 20 white roses. So that is 100 roses in total. Then we have 10 large head white hydrangeas there. So let's get conditioning these because I have just come straight from my wholesale from Holland. So I'm going to put you on a time lapse to condition and then we'll get into the good stuff. <laughs> We've now conditioned the 100 roses, which actually takes longer than making the bouquet because roses are very high maintenance when it comes to conditioning. Now, we haven't done anything with the hydrangea yet. All we need to do is just take these leaves off here because the less leaves, the better. That means that the water is going to go predominantly to the head and make it last longer. So I just might take all the leaves off. Okay, then I'm going to keep them in the plastic bags until we've done it so they're hydrated at all times. Then I'm going to show you the reality of making a large rose bouquet. So here we go. And that's all the guard petals, all the extra leaves that we've taken off and all the conditioning and the packet. So let's get on to making this simple way to make a large rose bouquet. Okay, so what I want you to do is just make three medium sized bouquets. So we're gonna be adding three white hydrangea and then we're gonna be, as, be adding as much roses as we can into that. So I just mix the roses up a bit so they're nicely distributed throughout the bouquet. And then we're basically just going to use the spiral technique as we always do. So put your stems into the bouquet at an angle. So we're probably going to put about 35 roses in each one and three hydrangeas. Sorry about that. and tie it at the binding point and then that one is done and do exactly the same then for the other two. because the renovation is finally being finished so I hope the lighting is okay in here because we are using natural but anyway let's get back to it 
So, the reason that I made three bunches is because florists work in threes, if you didn't already know, know that. It just makes it look, look more symmetrical, especially when we're doing a big bouquet and we need it to be round, and we're doing three separate bouquets into one. So if you do like two or four, it will look more of like an oblong shape and it will take longer to try and get that round shape. So I always do things in odd numbers. So, we just basically have to put them together as if these were just two stems of roses, just exactly the same. So just put them together, going in an angle like this. So they're bunched together now. And then I think I'll put the other one this side because there's a nice gap saying, come here. <laughs> okay, so then we have to do exactly the same. Now, as you can see, we do need to adjust it a little bit because it looks a bit skew whiff at the moment, but it's going to be easier for us to make it round. Now, we're going to have to tie these all together at the binding point, just like we do any other bouquet. So, hold them nice and firmly, grab your raffia, and just tie at the binding point all the way around. Now, I do like to lean these on the table so we don't get any back straights or arm makes. And then I'm just literally tying it at the back in a knot. So they're all nice and secure, tied together. Okay. So then they are nicely tied together and that takes the strain off our arms. Now I'm just gonna go around and make sure that it looks nice and round. It doesn't particularly matter if it's perfect at the moment because we're gonna be wrapping it. So let's just get on with that. Right now we're happy with the shape and the quality and how the bouquet looks. We now need to get on to wrapping it. So I've got two different shades of pinks here that I'm gonna wrap this with. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my roll of cellophane that I've got from my wholesalers, or you can get it from Amazon. And I'm just gonna basically cut four rectangles out of this one. And then four from the other shade of pink. Put that down here. So four of these as well. Then once we've got our eight rectangles, which will fit perfectly around the bouquet, well then we have to go individually folding them. So just fold it just like this for the eight rectangles. Okay, so now we've done that, what we're going to want to do is take our scissors to the center of our rectangle. So make sure they're all lined up nicely. And that one. And then we just wanna cut a square in the middle. Just like this, so it goes around the binding point nicely. It doesn't really scrunch the uh, cellophane up around it, otherwise it can look a bit dodgy. It just makes it look nice and even. And then what we're gonna wanna do when we've done that is place our bouquet, so where the binding point is here, if you can see, you just place that onto the square. I'll turn this round so you can see it better. And then just lift the two sides up of our cellophane. Now this bouquet is really big, so just sellotape it to the binding point as much as you can so it's nice and secure. And I'll bring you more towards me so you can see it. See, so I'm just bringing the cellophane up here and just securing it to the raffia at the binding point. Then we're going to want to turn it a quarter 
place it back down and do exactly the same. Now I'm going to do this three times and then it's easier to turn the bouquet upside down and do it that way. Just make sure the first three are secure on because we've only got two hands. So it's going to be easier to that send it over and go on. Okay. And then just one more time before we turn the bouquet upside down. Right, then I'm going to turn it upside down just like this. Make sure everything's secure. So just another bit of sellotape on this bit. Sometimes the cellophane can rip a tiny bit, just sellotape it back on and you're good to go. So now our bouquet is upside down, we can simply just grasp it like this and then just pop the cellophane around like this whilst we're holding it. I mean, if you've got somebody to help you, then <laughs> that is better, but I normally don't. So I've just found the easiest ways to do it. <laughs> so you can see it better. Okay, so this is a better view of what the wrapping looks like right now. Now, you can just basically titivate it, but I'd like to then pull my roses out because they've moved a little bit in the wrapping. So, I just like to just titivate the flowers, make sure that they look lovely. Okay, so now I'm happy with all the wrapping and it looks good. I'm now going to put some cellophane just around the binding point so that the uh, cellophane will stay as it is. So I'll just get my sellotape. And then I'm just going to wrap this around the binding point. And if there's any bits of cellophane still sticking out, you can just double tape your sellotape, put it at the back and just stick it so it's nicely stuck on. And you won't be able to see as much as the sellotape and mechanics there. And then just another one around this bit. And then it should be lovely and secure. Ta-da! Now this is gonna be a hand tied, so all we need to do is cut the bottoms of the stems and the water pockets on the hydrangea and then it is good to go and if you want to put some ribbon around the binding point you can or you can just give it so that it can go straight into a vase but here we have it thanks for watching this video supporting my channel don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment and i'll see you in the next video